Hi, this is Worth Godwin of WorthGodwin.com. In this lesson, I want to talk about a couple of pieces of equipment that are very commonly used by computer users. Uh, maybe not directly, but they're there on your desk or in your home or your office. And they're an important thing for your internet connection. And um, I'm going to talk about them a little bit, explain them a little bit better so you understand them better. I'm also going to explain why, if you're not using one of these pieces of equipment, why you might want to, and to help make your computer more safe and secure. And I'm also going to give you a little tip as to how to uh, do a quick fix that is, in probably 75% of the time, fixes problems with your internet connection where it's been working but then suddenly is not working. And it's a quick and easy thing to try out, do, to try to do. Uh, and it can save you the hassle of having to get on the phone with your internet service provider and sit on hold for half an hour, an hour, and then have them tell you to do the same thing. Uh, so now you'll know how to do it and understand it and be able to troubleshoot and fix some of your own problems, uh, potential problems, uh, more easily by yourself and save yourself some hassle and aggravation and even money potential. So, uh, oh, and one other thing I should probably mention is when I'm saying internet connection, and I'm talking about something, your internet not working, a lot of people misuse that term. And again, I'm not criticizing anybody for if they misuse a computer term because most times it's never been explained to you properly. Uh, the term internet does not specifically just mean web browsing. Like a lot of people say, say that their internet's not working and they're just talking specifically about the fact that they can't get to web pages. Internet actually includes web, but it also includes email and other things such as uh, instant messengers, uh, chats, things like that, video chats, audio chats, text chats. Um, and that all falls within the umbrella term of internet. So um, generally speaking, if your internet's not working, it means both the web doesn't work and email doesn't work. If you're having a problem where just one doesn't work, usually that's something more complicated and it won't be fixed by this easy fix. Uh, but let me go on and, and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, now I've got a couple pieces of equipment here I'm going to demonstrate with. Now I should probably mention that there are many, many, many different brands and makes and models of these equip types of equipment out on the market and so I couldn't possibly have all of them to show we show you with. Fortunately they all work basically the same way and there's really mostly cosmetic differences and uh, from one to the other so it's kind of like you know if you go from one car to another if you know how to drive one car then you can drive another car because they work along the same basic principles they all have a steering wheel they all have a, a, a some some way of showing that you're making it you know the turning on the turn signal there's a brake pedal there's a accelerator and so on they may look slightly different they may be in slightly different locations uh, you might have one car that has a uh, be a standard and another one that's an automatic and so forth but basically speaking they all work the same way so all the principles and things that I'm going to be talking about here will apply to no matter what equipment you and make and model equipment you have okay so um, what I have here this thing this is a DSL modem now your DSL modem, if you use DSL, it may not look exactly like this. Chances are, statistically speaking, it probably won't. It may have a different color or whatever, but it's still basically the same thing. And um, there are also cable modems, like if you have cable internet service, which goes through the, cab the television cable connection, what they call, uh, technically is called a coaxial cable connection. And, um, but I'm gonna use this as a demonstration model for both cable and DSL modems. They work basically the same way. There's only slight differences. Um, if we look at the back of the modem, you have line, and that is for your phone line, because DSL goes through the phone line. And if this were a cable modem, instead you, what you would see is a coaxial cable, you know, the little screw-on type that you would see on the back of a television set or on the back of your cable box if you use that. Uh, and then next to it you have a USB cord uh, socket, which is a uh, Oops, I dropped my cable here. Uh, here's a DS, here is a USB cord, and it's one that has two ends to it. 
two different types of ends. One is more square, and that's what goes into here, just like would the same type that would go into your printer, for example. And then this end is the type that goes into the computer. Um, this is on many cable modems and many DSL modems, but it is the less common way of connecting to your computer. So I'm mostly going to focus on what's here on the other end, which, let's get this turned around here, um, that's Ethernet. And that's also just known as a network cable. And this is an Ethernet cord. And it just plugs in to the thing. It has to be turned around the right way. And it snaps when it pops in. And then you have to squeeze this little doodad here to clip to pull it out. It looks very much like a phone cord, at least what a phone cord looks like here in the United States. If you're overseas, phone cords may look different. Uh, I believe they do in a lot of countries. Uh, but it looks pretty much like a phone cord, but if you actually compare the two side by side, you'd see that the Ethernet cord, or network cord, is wider and has a little bigger connector. Um, and so a cable modem is always going to have an Ethernet port on it, just like this DSL modem does. So that's what you have connected to your internet connection. It connects, um, what a modem does is it converts the signal from out there on your phone lines to coming to your house if you're using DSL or on the cable connection coming into your cable coming into your house and it converts it into a signal that can be read by the computer. And then we have something here and this is, uh, I'm going to use this as a demonstration for a um, router. Now Strictly speaking, if you want to get really tactical, this thing's something called a switch. Uh, a router contains a switch, and I'm using this one because of all the equipment I have here. This is the one that does look most similar to what you will probably find at the store if you go and buy one. This is uh, made by uh, Cisco, which is who, who owns the company Linksys. They bought Linksys a few years ago, and a lot of people call it Linksy, but it's Linksys. And that's one of the more common brands out there. There's uh, D-Link and Apple makes uh, a router and so forth. And each one, again, it looks a little different. Um, and some of them have an, the wireless ones will have an antenna on them or, or two antennas. Sometimes it's built in, sometimes it's visible on the outside. And then on the back, you have um, more of those ethernet cords, uh, ports, just like I was showing you on the route or on the modem. And you also have a little round connector this, this is the power connector, and typically most power connectors for these types of things are little round posts, and just plug into the one little round hole in the back. So basically, uh, these things, if you have a DSL modem or cable modem, you might not have a router. And the purpose of a router is to take your connection and split it off to multiple computers. That's why there's multiple ports on the back here for Ethernet connections or network connections. And again, most of them these days are wireless as well. So that has, it shares the internet connection and to multiple computers or even just to one. And it also converts it from wired to wireless if you have that type of um, a router. Now, if you don't have a router and you only have one computer, a lot of people might think, well, there's no reason to get one. But in fact, if you get a router, it actually adds another level of protection because it has something called a firewall in it. And the firewall is just a protective barricade between you and the internet. And in the more of these firewalls you have, uh, well, having two firewalls, one that's in your computer that's a software firewall, plus having a, a hardware one, physical one, that's in your router, that adds another level of protection. And so you are safer having one of these in here. Um, and I, so I strongly recommend that you go out and get a router, even if you only have one computer hooked up to your DSL or cable connection. So basically, you've got this connected, your DSL or cable modem connected to the, to the internet, to the coaxial cable or to the phone line directly. And then you have your router that goes between the wall and your modem. And then the ethernet cord gets plugged in to the DSL modem or cable modem and then the other end goes into one of the ports on the back of the router. Usually the port is labeled either WAN, W-A-N for wide area network or more commonly it's labeled as internet. So you want to plug that into the, the one that says WAN or internet. 
And then this sits between the cable, the DSL modem or cable modem and your computer. And then gets compute connected to the computer. Uh, unless you're using it wirelessly, it connects to the computer through another Ethernet cable.